Now at 8.6, it's our last little section, the hypothesis test about this part. You're going to find out that the testing is literally identical to 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, and 8.5. Testing a claim about population standard deviation. Well, there's really only thing, one thing we need to know. I, I just told you the steps are the same. Step one's going to be your claim, your h sub zero, h sub one. Step three is going to be your alpha. Step four is going to be your test statistics. Step five is going to be a picture. Six is going to be a decision. Seven is going to be interpretation. Exactly the same thing you've been doing, just like on your homework. The only difference is we have a different table. It's not a Z, it's not a T, it's a chi-squared. And to use that, we have a different test statistic. The test statistic is what I gave you last time. Chi-squared equals N minus 1, S squared, sigma squared. By the way, what's our, what's our S squared? Sample. Sample. I need to, I need to know that that's a sample. Sample, what is it? Variance. Variance, or sample standard deviation squared. You got it? What's that stand for? Population. population standard deviation squared, or population variance. Are we going to know that one? No. But this is just like every other test we've done. This piece of information is going to come from some claim. Remember doing that? That comes from the claim. We're going to plug that in from the claim. That's our evidence against our claim, or for our claim. You want to do an example and call it a day? Here's our last example. Here. <laughs> all right. I won't get all mushy on you. In a sample of 37 coins, they had a mean of 2.49910 grams and a standard deviation of 0 0.01648 grams. Test the claim that the population standard deviation of points is less than 0 0.0230 grams with a 5% significance level. Now, is it important when a government is making coins out of a precious metal to have the same variance or same standard deviation? Probably, right? Because if you don't, then you're going to get a coin that says it's worth a penny. I'm going to get a coin that says it's worth a penny, but yours is going to be worth more than mine. And that's just not acceptable to me. <laughs> because I want the one that's worth more. Well, no, you're going to want to be pretty sure they're all the same, right? And the mean wouldn't do it. A mean just says, well, the average, if you collect all of them, yeah, it's that. But that means that one could be really, really big and one could be really, really little. Right? And that wouldn't be a good thing. You notice the sound effect there? Big. Little. You don't want to do that. That would be really bad. So in a sample of 37 coins, The mean weight was 2.49910 grams with a standard deviation zero point zero one six four eight grams. I know those are very small numbers, so there's lots of them. Here is the question. Test the claim that the standard deviation, sorry, I need to put one more word in there. Test the claim that the population standard deviation is less than 0 0.023 grams. At a 0 0.05 significance level.
Sample 37 coins, mean weight was 2.49910 grams with a standard deviation of 0 0.0648. By the way, it says with a standard deviation. What type of standard deviation is this? Is it a population standard deviation or a sample standard deviation? Sample. Clearly a sample. If we had the population standard deviation, we wouldn't have to do this problem. You would know it. We're trying to test a claim about the population standard deviation. In fact, we want to find out 95% certainty. Where am I getting 95% certainty from? With 95% sureness that our coins vary less than 0 0.023 grams. So I can go to the government and say, hey, we're producing coins that don't vary or vary by less than 0 0.023 grams. Okay, I'm 95% sure of that. That's probably a good thing to know, right? We want to know not just that the average is right, but that we're not varying too much. That would be bad if we do that. Our claim opposite, everything's going to work exactly the same way. So step number one is your claim. And the opposite. Now, of course, you have to reuse the right notation. Should we be using a mu here? Are we dealing with a mean? Should we deal, deal with a uh, p here? Is this a proportion? What is this? What's the, t what's the claim say? The claim is from test the claim that the what? That gives it to you. What's the symbol for that? S would be the sample. Sigma would be the population derivation. So we're testing the claim that sigma is less than 0 0.023. How can I put less than 0 0.023? What's that? Oh, less than, yeah. 0 0.023. By the way, some of these might confuse you a little bit because there's a word up there that we're not even going to use. What word are we not even going to use? We're not even going to use the mean weight. That's just there. We're not going to use it. We're testing a claim about standard deviation. Why would we use the mean? It's not based on that. Weird, huh? Okay. Just throw that out there. Just let you know. All right, don't get it. What? Now, do the opposite. Opposite has the same letter and the same number but it's going to be the opposite statement. I'm going quickly through this because you guys should be pros of this. Which one is h sub 0, the top one, the claim, or the bottom one, the opposite? And that's h sub 1. So is it going to be possible to prove this claim true, yes or no? Yes, yes. yes it is, because it's stated as h sub 1. Of course, step number 2 is we simply restate that. h sub 0, sigma equals 0 0.023. We always change our equality. So we've restated that, we've, we've made that h sub 0 equal, h sub 1, we never changed that one. Uh, step 3 is your alpha, what is your alpha here ladies and gentlemen? Zero point. Step number 4 is to calculate your test statistic. Now there's no p-value method here, there's only the traditional method which is kind of nice. We don't got to learn two ways anymore. Step number 4 says <laughs> test statistic, it's on the board, you're going to do chi-squared n minus 1, s squared, sigma squared. How much is your n? 37. How much is your s? What is your s? Your s should be your sample standard deviation, right? What is that? That one. Yep. Okay, now, just like before with hypothesis testing, we were dealing with two proportions, or we were dealing with two means. Now we're dealing with two standard deviations. One's the sample, we just have that down. Do you see where the sample's coming from? Mm -hmm. What's this one? The that's why we list it with the equal sign, just like before. So that is our, our, our claim. That's where that's coming from. We're testing it against that claim. Here's our evidence. Here's our claim. 0 0.023. That's coming from our h sub 0. It even says it, doesn't it? It says sigma equals 0 0.023. It gives it to you. That's kind of nice. You just have to plug it in. Now, can you take these numbers and apply them to this formula? Just don't forget to square stuff. Don't forget to square stuff. So we have n minus 1, that's 37 minus 1, or you just put 36. We got 0 0.01648 squared. We got 
zero two three squared. Do it quickly because we only got a couple minutes. Say it again. 18.48. One way you can do this, do this in your head. Okay, do this in your head. But do this square times 36 divided by this square. And that should give that to you. Say it one more time. 18.48. This does not work like z-scores. If you're above 3 or 3.5, it doesn't automatically say, oh, that's really rare. It doesn't do that. Uh, it, it's based on your, your mark, your critical value. In step number five, you've got to use your critical value, and you've got to know whether you're a left tail, a two tail, or a right tail test. Hey, that's coming back. That's the same exact stuff we did. Look at your h sub one, left tail, two tail, right tail. Which one? Left tail. That should be a left tail. Left tail. You see why it's a left tail? Just like the last couple, except this isn't standard normal. Now, how about this one? How much area is to the left? How much is over here? 0 0 0 0 0 Do we have to cut it in half? That will only be for a two-tail test or a Coffin's interval. If that's 0 0.05, listen carefully, should I look up 0 0.05 on your chi-squared chart right now? What do you look up? 0 .9. Uh, point not, point what? Point. Why not point nine seven five like last time? It's not a two-tail test. It's not point zero two five. It's point nine five. So right now, with your degrees of freedom, your degrees of freedom is how much? You're going to go down to your degrees of freedom thirty six. You're going to go over to your point nine five. That's the area to the right. And you're going to find your chi-squared marker critical value. Yeah. Ah, shoot. Make it approximate then. If it's not 36, it's closer to 40. Use 40. How much? 26.50? This is called your chi-squared critical value. It should look really familiar pictorially as the, our last hypothesis test. We have a left tail, right tail, two tail test. We've got a critical value here. We've got a test statistic here. Now tell me this, this is the last thing we're going to talk about. What's the rejection region? What's the fail to reject region? Which one of these is rejection region, left or right? Left. It's always area in the tail. Which is the rejection region, left or right? Left. left. This is the fail to reject region. So here it comes, the last conclusion we get to do. Where does this fall? Does it fall in the fail to reject or the reject? This goes from zero to infinity. Does it fall in the rejection or the fail to reject? This goes 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Does this fall in the rejection region or the fail to reject? Reject. Yeah, it's to the left of that. It's in the tail. It's right here. So what we would do in step number six, reject h sub zero. If you reject h sub zero, you accept h sub one. You accept your claim. So right now you'd say the same thing. There is enough evidence to support the claim that our population standard deviation is less than 0.23 grams. Our pennies vary appropriately, or don't vary too much. There is, and then you finish that off.